spreading the net, converging on it, coming to balance, and, and being able to fill that void. Is there, I don't know if silver lining is the right phrase, but is there value in that happening in the first game in terms of a teachable? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, anytime it's them on tape and you're not watching other teams do it, you kind of put it off. We always talk about bot versus borrowed information, and they, we bought it right there. We own it. We own it forever. Um, those guys that are involved in that play will we'll always remember to break down now. I can pretty much assure you that. Um, and then, you know, having the, the reality of the situation is we were able to get a lot of guys playing and rotating and getting reps in there and getting experience playing, which we need. We know that. So there's a lot, there's a lot of good that can come out of a game like that, even a bad situation. Obviously the first – Live reps, live game reps for Ethan, mm -hmm. Alex, Tanner. What did you take away from what they did or what they were able to do? Really loved it. I, I you know, obviously you wish he made the kick, um, the one that we missed, the 46 yarder. But <clears throat> you know, they've been even in that. Again, there's some experience to be learned from there. You know, it's fourth and one. We're going for it. Situation where he was locked and ready to go. We're going for it on fourth down. Kind of maybe has a little bit of hesitation of, oh, we're gonna we're either gonna convert the first down or it's turnover on downs. But we get a penalty there. Um, get backed up and have to kick a, a five yards deeper field goal and being able to stay in the tune of the game right there is a learning opportunity for him um, and for me to even make sure I know we always talk about it in practice we've had those situations but to stay in his ear and make sure that not take anything for granted with all these guys being so young that they just stay in tune stay into the game be football players more than just specialists. Is there uh, such a small live sample size obviously but we see you guys working a lot on the on the place kicking out here as well mm -hmm. um, is there how are you feeling about how Tanner's done so far, and is there any concern about range at all? No, I mean, that was as, as best I can remember. I think it's his first miss inside of 50 all of camp. So, um, been very accurate. He hit from 65 the other day. I mean, he's he's definitely got enough leg strength. You saw it on his kickoffs, his touchbacks. He was three-stepping to the end zone. When he went to a full step, it was eight deep. And it was great hang time. So, no concerns about leg strength. Obviously, um, you know it's, it's, we're still evaluating the position as as we are everybody on this roster. But a lot to be encouraged about from a young group. You mentioned the leg strength on Ethan and on his punts. Mm -hmm. Is there any thought at all to you know concerns that he might be out kicking in coverage or anything like that? No, I, honestly, no. He's got such. It, Lake Street is two parts, right? Distance and hang time. And he has, I mean, even that ball was like a four eight, four seven six hang or something like that. So a good ball hang. Um, obviously a little bit more direction would be a, a ideal. And it was his first game. We talked about going into it. We wanted to cover some kicks in practice. You guys have seen it probably before, putting so many balls out of bounds. And it's like, we're not even getting our, we haven't been able to get those. Even when we're full cover reps, the ball's out of bounds and we're trying to toss the ball back in the returner and get those. And so to be able to put the ball in play is part of the preseason. No different than us hanging kickoffs up, you know, or the team's hanging up for us and returning it. Like you're trying to get reps full speed regardless of the outcome. You want, obviously you want to play better. You want to put better things on tape, but you got to figure out who can block one-on-one, -on -one, who can who can play in space, all those type of things. If you don't evaluate it now, you're going to evaluate it when the season comes and it's going to cost you. So again, I think it's, it's all, all good. You know, I, I, there's not a rep that I would take back. Um, just wish, obviously we made, the most of all of them, but I, even if you look at that net, we have five guys within a six-yard window on the returner. You, you could, if you sent a screenshot of that, you, you, there's no way you'd tell me that he scored. So it is what it is. And then, uh, Just a couple more guys. Something you said earlier that was pretty interesting was uh, you know, trying to punt the ball a long way, so treating it like a kickoff return versus a punt return. Yeah. How do you uh, reteach that when these guys, obviously, not only are they young, here, but like also you're sort of reteaching their conception of those punt distances that, yeah. that they're used to. Correct. I think, you know, obviously we cover a lot of kicks too. So um, just drill work, a lot of things. And you can't always go full speed out here. You know, you'd burn them out if you went 60 yards uh, covers every rep back to back to back. Um, so that's not the intent, but being able to spread the field and understanding we're going to run vertically longer as opposed to squeezing and trying to lean and stack too early to where we get bunched up and we don't have the field spread. So we got to make sure we're going to get teams that want to go big field return against us because they think they got time and space to get back to the big field. We got to be able to spread that net out, cast it wide, have good contain, and, and, and be able to converge on the ball, set an edge, and swarm the football. All set? Good. Cool. Thank you guys. Thanks. Just looking back.
back at Stetson's performance specifically? What did you feel like allowed him to kind of settle in and get into a rhythm as the game wore on? Yeah, just just kind of that, right? You just playing some plays, breaking the huddle, getting through some some uh, getting through a series, getting to halftime, talking about some adjustments, what the next plays are going to be. Um, like anything, I mean, it was his first snap. You know, not just for him, for a lot of guys in the NFL on both sides. And uh, you know, as you guys could see, he just kind of settled in and gotten a little bit of a rhythm there. What will be the biggest adjustment for him when you guys start going against the Raiders? Um, well, I mean, it's going to be a different defensive scheme. I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't even looked into the Raiders yet, right? I mean, we're focused on today's practice and, and cleaning up the mistakes and 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 whatnot from la uh, from two days ago. So, and, and I mean, really more specifically, the joint practices, not just so much the game. Yeah, but well, it's it, but to us, it's all the kind of the same, right? I mean, it's the preseason, those scrim. I mean, the. Obviously, all of our starters will be will be going in, in the joint practices, but but for all the guys, I mean, the way that they're going to approach these next two days, hopefully just worried about today going against ourselves and continuing to get better. But when we get into the Raiders situation, really approaching it no different than it's going to be in the game because that, that's what we try to mimic in those practices. You guys have been rotating a lot of linemen through camp, uh, especially along that first team. And I wanted to ask you your, your take, um, not necessarily specific to players, but within the parameters of this scheme that you guys run, what do you look for in a left tackle traits-wise and ability-wise, and what do you look for in a right guard? That's a really good question. You know, it's because it, it is two totally different positions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and things happen a little bit faster on the inside sometimes. And, you know, obviously you're you're surrounded by two guys at all times, a center and a tackle, you know. So um, not necessarily talking about traits, you know, in terms of, you know, kind of what we're looking for, you know, from a draft perspective or free agents or whatnot. But um, some guys are just built to be tackles. Some guys are built to be guards. And if you are blessed to have the versatility, both mind and body, to be able to kind of bump in inside, you know, it's just a blessing when you get into those situations. Um, for example, last year with Elijah Vera Tucker, uh, you know, he, he played um, – guard his whole first year and we, we had a lot of injuries in the Jets and he had the versatility to bump outside and I think you're seeing that a little bit from no boom and we're seeing it from a practice uh, standpoint where he can kind of go with both. Well, what, what separates guard play? Uh, what makes guys stand out from, you know, as obviously that job is, is a competition right now. So what, what are key things that you guys look for as coaches that separate the play? There's there's a lot of things, you know, from first of all, from a, let's just go to the other side with it, like a tackle. You know, a lot of people are looking for the length, right? They have to block these great edge rushers on, on the outside. And, you know, if they have great length, uh, that can separate them from being a tackle or just a kind of an interior guy only. Sometimes on the inside, just the bend and the quick twitch, you know. And I'm not even talking about any of our guys, just in general, right, um, you know, that, that you're looking for that can kind of separate. Um, you, were, uh, you were calling uh, Sean historically has uh, not called these preseason games. Right. And, you have so much experience in that pass off, right. obviously, but here specifically, what was that like? And um, when Stetson is um, learning on the fly in his first game experience, what is your communication like with him? He mentioned that you were very clear with him through the entire. Yeah, you know, um, to answer your first question, I mean, yeah, I've obviously called it for a few years now, but again, you're calling it with, for, for different guys now, right? And a whole new offense. There's no one, no one here that was with us in New York. Um, and then obviously just the coaches. It, Having, having Sean, you know, obviously Robert Sala was a defensive coach, so he wasn't going to give too much input from an offense perspective, but just being able to have communication with the head coach, a guy that's called plays for a long time and done it at a very high level, so that was a little different, even though it's the preseason. And uh, so it just was a cool experience doing it with Sean and the rest of the guys. And then for Stetson, you know, and, and not just Stetson, any of the quarterbacks, some guys want to hear more in the headset. Some guys don't. Some of the veterans just, hey, give me the play, maybe one little detail or something like that, one little reminder, but then I got to go play. I got to go play the play. For Stets, uh, the more he got into the groove, the less I was saying. And, you know, uh, not to share too much information on what gets said on there, but sometimes you're having a conversation with him. Obviously, he can't talk, but you can kind of see the mannerisms when he has a good play or whatnot, and you say something, you can kind of, you're having that kind of nonverbal communication from him. So it can be fun. And again, as, as, uh, as he got comfortable throughout the game, um, you can kind of, you can kind of feel that. And then as you guys reassign those duties during the actual preseason itself, um, who, how does that then, uh, rearrange people who are your assistants as well who work with you as well like does the delegation of duties split do other um, people get other opportunities the, to try things? yeah i mean a little bit but nothing that's like that was crazy you know so it's uh nothing that was 
wholly out of the ordinary, just someone giving me a down and distance that normally wouldn't be given a down and distance. But for the most part, it was it was basically the same. It's going to be in uh, Seattle. What was uh, your evaluation of how Puka played in that game? Um, thought he did some really good things. You know, it's it's like any rookie, as comfortable as they might be, that's your first game. You know, and I thought just within a series or two, and uh, Matthew and I were talking about it today, just. How, how much he settled in, you know, and, and what was, else was cool is he saw some looks that he doesn't get to see from our defense, and, and that, that's always going to be the case, right? Your defense is only going to do so much, and then when you go against someone else, there's, you know, inevitably going to be something that uh, that they present at you that you've never seen. For for example, uh, that first catch of his where he caught that out route when we were hot and ripping got him the ball, it's a totally different look than he's ever seen. We got a, a blitz off the side. There's a linebacker typically, all right, versus our defense, a guy's topping him down. It's an easy, you know, read for him. Well, that one, no one came down, and he broke out, and he broke out a little bit too quick, but there was a trap cloud out there. And so, so just that little play right there will resonate with him, you would think, I would say, the rest of his career and something that he hadn't seen. And it might seem simple, but it's something that these guys got to go through. And so for him to get that and then, to, again, just play a half of football, get the touchdown, do you know, run a great route, Stetson, great protection right there, it was, um, it was cool to see him settle in as the game went on. guys getting stuck on and having to really work through that year specifically well it's just you know, I mean for, you know for the game it's I'll, I'll go back to 2017 the first year I was a receiver coach and we had we get out there for our first two minute drill and I would think everything went pretty smooth the week or two before that and you feel like you've covered everything and then all of a sudden it's live and there's no coaches behind to fix everything and we can't just stop the drill we got to go play every 40 seconds or whatnot and we were covering our, we were illegal like four plays in a row it was, it was incredible you know and so again it's just you can't you can't mimic those situations as much as you try to but the game's the game and for those guys to just go through the good and the bad and getting the ebbs and flows of it is uh, it's huge that's why the preseason's huge not just for rookies but 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 big for them because it is their first crack at it how do you sort of settle more, guys man. down that Yeah, you just talk to them and don't make it any bigger than it is, you know. I mean, maybe whatever. Every guy's going to be a little bit different, and the position coach is going to know them as well as anybody. Uh, you know, us as play callers and, and play designers, even though it's the preseason, you're not going to show much. How can I get a guy in a rhythm by getting him a catch, something that he's comfortable with, something that he's done, you know, 15, 20, 40 times in practice since OTAs, you know. So every guy's a little bit different. You try to just keep it lighthearted. Hey, guys, it's... It's not the Catalina wine mixer. We don't got to make anything up out here. You know, it's it's still football. It's really no different than you know what they've been doing their whole life. They're just doing it on the biggest stage now. Again, albeit the preseason, but such a building block for these guys when they get into the regular season. So it's not their first crack at it. What do you want to see from Puka going up against first team defense against the Raiders in these next couple practices? Just, just keep progressing. building on what he's doing. You know, he's going against first team defense every single day. You know, going into his 11 practice and training camp, and then dating back to OTAs. So again, not not making any anything up, continue to build on uh, what he's doing, uh, giving him a little bit more inventory every day like we're giving everybody else, you know, just getting ourselves prepared for that, that first game in September. Um, if, if I could real quick, um, Sean mentioned uh, in terms of sort of a, a little bit of a wake-up call, you guys have obviously been getting used to a lot of young guys, but on the field and actual game action is, is another thing entirely, and you mentioned one of the, the wake-up moments for him, or not wake-up moments, but sort of it hits home when guys in a two minute guys are maybe trying to huddle up and because that's what you would do at practice to right. through something that you can't what was it for what was it for you was there one um i know you've worked with young teams in the past but in this case was there one with this group from the game action um not not really not nothing that i can you know it, that last drive it felt like it was like a whole day long i mean they went 20 <laughs> plays i don't know what the exact count was because there were some penalties and stuff like that but it was a cool little deal for them i mean there was so, so many ebbs and flows of that drive and then obviously um, you know I think we, we gave it back to him with two and a half three minutes whatever it was and we thought there was gonna be a chance of two minutes so just being able to tell our guys hey make sure these rookies and, and all the guys that were still up at that point are ready for, for the two minute situation because again it's gonna be live there's no we can't just blow the whistle and reset the drill right and um, that's why it's so important for these guys to go through those experiences the guys that haven't done it and, and keep building and growing from that thanks, thanks guys thanks. appreciate it Michael, good job. Hey, Ra. <laughs>
Uh, it's really been cool. You know, John is uh, everything is advertised. Um, that spirit, that that uh, that fun-loving guy, and I'm really getting a chance to uh, be excited today when we get a chance to watch him practice a little more and get more involved. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but the intelligence, the smarts, um, the coach on the field, some of those type of things that he's so accustomed to doing. Um, he's a guy that's worn the green dot. So like having two guys in the back end that has actually had the green dot before and be able to communicate throughout the defense only can increase that, especially with a young team. Um, so that's very helpful. Now he's not getting the green dot from Ernest because Ernest would beat him up. But um, uh, those two being back there and you know the potential of Russ helping him develop and you know Quentin Lake and all those guys, you know, it's some great crates, great competition. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen today. What are your points of emphasis after reviewing the run defense from Saturday? You know, I don't really know if you get as deep into it as like run defense. You know, it's more about like just uh, situational awareness of people that are in and how you want those guys to play. So how you want to set the edge, um, it wasn't the standard. So you got to do some of those things better, you know, that the people did that when they got in and had the opportunities to make those plays. Um, we got really good examples of it with Kier shedding the block, making a tackle for a loss, and then one time getting too thick on the block and having it bounce outside and get into a bad crackle place corner. So I don't know if you can actually go, you know how they feel about stats. They're for losers, right? It's more about the process of going through the, the mechanics of it all, setting real blocks, how hard you hit a block, how much you can engage into a guy before you can shed and release and get off. Um, how fluidly can you feel a crack or place, um, depending on that quarter safety sitting in tight and being able to feel that stuff quicker um, to do some of those things. We had two bad crack or place miss. Um, it got a little mushy up front. Um, you like to see some guys be able to get off block and make some of those plays for minus yards or two yards or whatever the case may be um, to a lot of things to limit. But you can never come in and say, you know, uh, what are your pressures on the run game? You know, it's really more about our technique. It's about us. It's about our process and going through that process to get it better. Yeah, that, that's the that's the beauty of it. Particularly the young group, everything's brand new, right? Uh, with most of the guys out there, a lot of the guys, I'd say that was the first NFL game. That was the first time walking to SoFi, uh, which I did not realize until the night of. When you walk around and watch guys look into the stands, it's like, wow, I forgot we haven't come down here for our practice this year. Um, so to get be able to get those guys out there, you don't attribute next year to youth. It's more so the experiences of going through the trials and the tribulations that we've been through as coaches, or a lot of us been through coaches, and being able to get out there and let those guys go through those moments. And then you get these very teachable, correctable moments on tape that's like exciting. And then you get a chance to watch guys' response. Like their first to the second game is always such a big response, um, particularly with the people that's going out there for the second time. And not the what happens or the result of the play, just the, the way that they got to the, being about a part of that part of the play. And it's just so much fun to watch that stuff happen. And Jordan, um, that's the part of the game I love, that teaching the book, that te those teachable moments, those correctable moments, those things you can change to see if they, how quickly they can transfer those things, and it's awesome. Have you ever coached anyone that went out for that first preseason game a rookie that defied all of that, the nervousness, they did everything right or, or almost everything right? Gary actually counted today. I'm doing this for 21 years in the National Football League. I think it's 21, right? I was counting, thinking about it today. And I don't know because there's been so many different people that have done some of those things. I remember coaching Tenard Jackson when he was a rookie, and he made so many plays in the preseason. He got close to so many plays. It was like, man, this guy finds a way to get around the ball, and he was different, and he became a starter. Um, so these guys that you coached in the past that have become found ways from the rookie platform to getting thrust into a lineup to starting, those guys are a little bit different because they got close to a lot of plays in the preseason. They may have made some on the practice field, which you saw, and maybe they made some in the preseason game, and then you just let them play themselves until you get them right. And he was one of the guys that I could think of right off the bat. Akeem Talib was no different when he was a rookie in Tampa. Um, some of the guys like that, I'm thinking, speaking more from the back end, from uh, being in that position group room and stuff like that. But it's been a, a lot of fun to watch. We had some guys in Atlanta. I remember Devondre Campbell when he was a rookie linebacker. Um, his question mark was instincts coming into the league, and he showed great instincts from credit to his coach at the time and Jeff Ulbrich. Um, to get him to go out there and display those things, and it's been great. You know, we had a little bit of that from BY this week. You know, like when he was fresh and healthy and ready to go, he looked awesome. When he was tired, he looked tired. You know, and it's like, it's one of those things. And it's like, it was also strategically done. You know, how many times do you go out there and play 20 snaps in a row? You know, not often. You know, usually you get a chance to get some subs, particularly being up there and being the guy that rushes. You get three hard rushes, you may get a blow. You get somebody in there for you on some of the normal D&D things, and then all of a sudden you come back out and you're ready to fresh and ready to rush. Everybody's not an alien like Aaron, so um, until you develop that alien-type status, you do those things.
speaking of, there's a couple more defensive rookies. Uh, it was evident that you know, Trey had some learning moments when he was playing outside in training camp, and it felt like maybe he, he applied and went, I guess learned from those things. Through years, no, you're Saturday exactly night. right. I, that was, I mean, you must have been sitting in my meeting room when I said that, but I was sitting with the coaches, and I said, uh, I said it was great to see some of the things that he failed at out here on some of the down the field balls or maybe getting a penalty. He was able to not get a penalty in the game. Now, that first one is questionable, right? I don't know. Did he grab him? Did he not? <laughs> <laughs> his teammate, you know, they're out there battling at TCU. He got up, but he got the he got the he got the pin last in that one, right? He got to get up and talk smack and got out of there, potentially getting a taunting penalty in this regular season, because they don't know that's your buddy. Um, but then he made some plays down the field on look and lean opportunities. He made some plays um, in the end zone and he was able to get out there, and he, he was so excited he cramped up. Not because he was tired, just he was so excited. And, um, you know, all those things happened to those guys, but I was really impressed with the way he was able to bounce up and make some of the correctable mistakes from practice and apply them to the game. And that's generally what you wish a lot of people can do. Now, everybody don't get the opportunity he gets in practice, right? He's been out there with the ones. He's been out there primarily with the twos. He missed a bunch of time in the, in the off season with a little, little setback. Um, but being out there, getting that experience, that's huge. Some of these guys, that was their first significant amount of time on the grass and getting it in the, in the biggest lights is, um, is great for those guys too. So they'll grow as well. You guys were um, experimenting a little bit with Jordan Jones in the slot. Uh, and you know, obviously Kobe is going to play that star for you guys. But in the past, that's been a position very specific and unique sure. to one player. Are you guys wanting to train people in a depth role specifically at star? Or does that change as you kind of go further along and you mix different people into playing in that type of, of look for you guys? Jordan, you always have a starter. Um, Aubrey and, and Beak have done a, a wonderful job of training those guys. And Mike Harris really is a, a star coach, right? So he's done a nice job of training those guys. So you have Kobe who's been out, going out with the ones most of the time. We've seen a lot of Sean Jolly out there with the twos and sometimes mixed in with the ones based on rotations of the day, so to speak. And then that, that provided days when you gave Kobe your rest or Jolly due to a small tweak or setback. I mean, you got guys like Jordan Jones in there. You've been able to see Terrell Engel go in there. And you've seen a bunch of different guys bounce around, a little bit of rust and walk through. Um, so when you watch those guys go out and you're developing all these guys that play inside, you're just increasing their knowledge base. And Jordan had a chance to go out there with the first group the other night and really did a nice job. He made some mistakes. He made some really good tackles. He ran around. He played fast. And I look forward to him making the next step in this next game as well. What about Mike's background uh, makes him the fit for the star coach? You know, he's really smart. Um, we had a, a really good off season. He worked with us last year in training camp, and he was able to do a bunch of our breakdowns. Um, and when you get a guy that can just focus on the star position, being inside and communicate with our inside linebacker coach on how the fits go, uh, and also with Arby and Beak, you know, obviously they know it. But when you allow a young man to focus on something and get and give him a, a role, so to speak, they take pride in it. And they wanted it to be right. So when he gets his opportunities to work with some of those younger players, um, that's a moment he won't ever forget. I just was recently got an opportunity to go to the Hall of Fame and, and see Rondé Barber get inducted into it, one of the greatest stars of all time. And I ran across some of the old players that played with him, like a John Howe, when I was in Mike's position. And he said, man, I thank you so much for, for coaching me when you were the young guy on the staff and getting me ready for when I got my opportunities. And, and that, that means the world. And when you get those kind of opportunities, when you're Mike, um, you want to give those things back to some of your young coaches to get them opportunities to coach as well. Awesome. Cool. See, guys, I can't believe you guys made me wait that long. <laughs> <laughs> I blame artists. <laughs> 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 then artists.